Welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're here today with us for Explorer Classroom. My name is Jennifer Bergen and we are celebrating something here in the United States. It's Pride Month. So to all of our viewers and our explorers who identify as a part of this group, we see you and we celebrate you. At National Geographic, we believe that anyone can be an explorer and that you have the power to make a difference in the world no matter how old you are. Explorer Classroom is here to inspire you with stories from the field and connect you with our National Geographic Explorers live to answer your questions. This June, Explorer Classroom will be focused on exploration. We hope to empower learners like you to keep exploring because many of you are headed into a much needed summer break, but exploration never stops. Today, our explorer is Dr. Samuel Ramsey. Sammy is an entomologist, which means he's a scientist that studies insects. It might surprise you then to learn that he was afraid of insects as a child, but thanks to the support of his local library, Sammy began researching insects in second grade and has never stopped. <laughs> He's a champion of insects, especially pollinators. And today, Sammy will share how his current research on bees can help all of us better understand the pandemics that affect pollinating insects. But before we get into today's lesson, I want to welcome our registered guests. Hello and shout outs to Hackett Elementary, Gretchko Elementary, Sacred Heart Catholic, oh, Sacred Heart, Roden <laughs> Public Schools, Kingswood Academy, Arlington Public Schools, my people, and of course, all of our homeschool friends out there. We're thrilled to have you for our last episode of the season. And with that, let's get Explorer Classroom started. I'm going to pass it over to Sammy so that you learn what are we buzzing about when we talk about bees. It's all yours, Sammy. All right. Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Sammy, your friendly neighborhood entomologist. And uh, my nickname for a long time has been Dr. Bugs, even before I became a doctor, because I love bugs. So I'm going to guess you guys don't really need a lot of introduction at this point to really know what it is that I do. But I think everybody should have a good theme song. Do you guys agree? Yeah. So I recorded one. Here we go. <laughs> I was looking for my moths. I just couldn't find them. He ain't got no competition. Only he ran my prescription. Back to bus. He ain't got no busy line. You can call him anytime. Back to bus. <laughs> All right, you guys. So I am Dr. Sammy, your friendly neighborhood entomologist. And I'm going to guess that you guys already know what an entomologist does. Um, but if you had to guess, <laughs> you would probably guess that I study bugs, right? And bugs are really, really, really cool. But every time I tell somebody that I am an entomologist, the question that they normally ask me is, why? Why do you want to study bugs? They're weird and icky and gross and really small. And I don't agree. Uh, I also think that they are really, really important. So I want to ask you guys a question for a moment. When people ask me why I study bugs. I have a, just a really quick thing that I do where I'm like, okay, guys, what do you think that there are more of in this world? So which do you think there's more of? Grains of sand on earth or individual insects on earth? What do you think? Aha, uh -huh. yeah, I see some answers coming. And that is right. There are actually more insects on this planet than there are grains of sand on this planet. There's tons of sand in the desert, tons of sand on the beaches, but the bugs outnumber all of it. Insects are so important for our planet. I want you to think about this for a moment. If you took all the people on earth, 
and you put them on a scale and then you took all the insects on earth and you put them on a scale, which do you think would weigh more? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. The answers are rolling in and <laughs> you guys, you guys guessed it again. Uh, actually, we're pretty evenly split between people and bugs, but it's actually the bugs. Even though each individual bug weighs a lot less than you do, all of them together weigh 300 times more than all the people on earth. That's because insects are really, really important. They keep the entire system of plants and animals around us really healthy by doing all the important things that they do. And one of the most important things that insects do is pollinating. That means they go to a flower and they take some of the pollen from that flower to another flower and then that flower can make fruit and other flowers and we eat that fruit or those vegetables. Let's see. So I study some of the most famous pollinators out there. I study bees. All those little bugs that you see on my hands right there, those are bees. And notice none of them are hurting me. And I think one of the reasons why people are always so surprised when they see this picture is because they don't know the difference between bees and wasps. But there is a difference between them. I wouldn't do this with wasps, but bees are actually a lot more, uh, what's the word? Uh, gentle. <laughs> they can still sting if they get cranky, um, but if you work with them and you know how to interact with them, they are a lot nicer. Um, so I, I want to know if you guys can tell what a bee looks like. Is this a bee? Yeah, uh-huh. You are correct. This is a bee. What about this? Is this a bee? Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting some no's here. I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of no's here. This is actually a bee. Bees actually spend uh, oftentimes most of their life with no legs and no wings, no eyes, no ability to fly. This is what most people think of when they think of a bee. Adorable little guy, he's got his wings, got these adorable little eyes, he's got the stripes, just flying around doing his little bee thing, right? This is what a bee is, but for most of their lives, bees don't do any of that. They just are these squiggly little worms that live oftentimes in the ground and they need a good location for them to grow up because they can't defend themselves. Notice they don't have anything to protect themselves. No eyes, no, no uh, wings, they can't fly away from danger. So they have to find a way to protect themselves. Now I study this stage of the bees, because this is the time where it's the easiest for the bee to get sick. And a lot of diseases that make bees really sick attack this stage when they are called a larva. So I, Dr. Sammy or Dr. Bugs, I go all over the world and I'm going through forests and looking for these little bees in the ground and trying to understand how we can keep them healthy. Because without these bees, we would lose a lot of our food. When the bees fly from flower to flower, they allow those plants to make the fruits and vegetables we eat. And so it's really important to know how to keep those bees healthy. So I do a lot of my work in Asia, this section of the world that you see on your screen right here. And that means I've got a lot of land to cover because Asia is really big. And while I'm there, me and my team will actually dig bees out of the ground because that is where most bees live. I think a lot of you probably think, when you think of bees, you might know somebody who's a beekeeper. And so you see these boxes that they keep the bees inside of and you think, oh, so that's where all the bees live, right? Well, there are actually 20,000 species of bees and only one lives in a box like that. Most of the rest of them live in the ground or in little holes in wood. And so we will dig them up and we'll take a small sample of the baby bees that you see right there, that's what they live inside of. And we'll take that back to the lab. And inside of the lab, I get to do my best work. So this is me being a busy bee myself. I'm doing a lot of tests to see if the bees are sick 
and to see how we can make them healthier. But I don't want you to think that the only work that can be done to keep bees healthy has to be done inside of a laboratory. This is me in a lab in Thailand, but you can do this right in your backyard because the things that bees really need, well, bees really need the same stuff that you need. They need to live in a space where they're safe. They need a home and you can give a bee a home because it's not that hard. Uh, foxes have holes, birds have nests. Bees usually like to live in these little round structures. Um, they are the reeds of plants. And if you wanted to give a bee a home, you could literally go and purchase one. Uh, you could talk to your parents and you guys can find these kinds of, they're called bee hotels. And they've got all of these little reeds inside of them. Oh, hey, we've got one sticking her head out right now. Oh, wait a sec. Let me stop sharing my screen for a second so you can see this even clearer. So right here, this is what the bees live inside of. All of those little holes, are places where different species of bees will make their home. And something I really want you to notice because I think it's super cool. If you look closely at this bee hotel, there are already some bees inside and there's a part of it that's plugged with mud. Do you guys see that? This one right here has a plug of mud. That means that the bee who is raising her babies inside of that hole she finished with that tube. She put all the babies that she could inside of it and she gave them a lot of food. And to keep them safe, she sealed it with mud so that they would be able to stay there and live healthily until they turn into adults. And some of these bee hotels will even allow you to watch this process occur. If you look at this one, it's actually transparent. And you can see that little cocoon right there there's a bee that already emerged from that one last year when I first put this out. I love this kind of stuff, guys. Uh, uh, okay, so if you want to do this kind of thing yourself, you don't even necessarily have to go out and spend money on it. You can be really creative yourself and you can just get a big chunk of wood and find. Um, a parent or guardian or an older person who you know and trust, who has some power tools. And with a big chunk of wood, you can just drill holes into it. It can just be a log in your backyard. But if you drill holes into it, the bees now have a home. They can crawl into that hole, they'll lay an egg, and they'll fly every day and they'll collect pollen and nectar from flowers. And they'll put it inside of that hole. And every day their baby will get a little bit bigger and you'll notice something. In your backyard, there will be more flowers. And in the entire area of your neighborhood, because you've given those bees homes, they will produce, uh, they will allow for more flowers to grow. If you have a garden or even vegetables, now you'll have more of them because of those bees. So it's a really, really, really cool system that benefits you and it benefits them. And uh, ones like this that actually open up you can watch the whole process as it occurs. So inside of that, because it's transparent, you can see everything that the bees are doing all day long. Now they do like their privacy, so you should close it when you're not looking, but it's a really great system. Another thing that you can do is provide the bees some food. They need the same things that you need. They need a secure, safe place to live, but they also get really hungry and they need something to eat. And your backyard could be a great place for them to find food if it's not just grass out there. Now, I know a lot of people think that the best kind of yard is one where there's only grass, but I think this kind of yard is even better. Everybody, this is a pollinator garden. My best friend when I was in graduate school, his mom was so concerned with how the bees were doing that she wanted to make sure that they all had food. So she went out and found a list of all the different native plants that used to grow in this area of Maryland where we were living. And she planted tons of them. And every morning or every Saturday morning, I would go out to her backyard 
and I would just watch all the bees. I'd set up a camera and you just see all of this activity from all of these beautiful bees that are pollinating all of these plants. All of those bees have food now because of that one person and you can be that one person. So when you go home and you talk to your parents, let them know that you and your family have the power to help bees be even healthier if you can provide them with a home, which is easy to do, or if you can provide them with food in a pollinator garden. And if you need any more ideas or wanna learn more about what you can do, you can actually watch a documentary that I was a part of making with PBS Nature. You know, discovering the secret life of bees took me on a journey I was not expecting. My garden of a thousand bees. You'll get to learn about a gentleman who during the pandemic wanted to find something to do with his time and decided he was going to turn his, uh, his backyard into a bee sanctuary. And so he got a bunch of chunks of wood and drilled holes in them and then started filming all the things the bees were doing. He got really obsessed. He named all of them. It's adorable. You should all totally watch it. It came out last October and you can see it for free on PBS Nature. All right, everybody. And if you have any questions, I am here to answer them. Thanks for listening to me talking about bees. Sammy, you've been amazing. Thank you for being <laughs> our final episode of the season. We are just so impressed and grateful to you. Oh, thank you. I had so much fun. And everybody, I love your curiosity. Please stay curious. Who thinks they'll stay curious? Can we do a little bee waggle to make yeah. a little promise? Yeah. Little beat, little round dance. There we go. Well, kids, teachers, families, Sammy, you are wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. And that's it for Explorer Classroom for ages four through eight for this school year. We've <laughs> had a lot of fun with you, but we all need a break, right? Summer is <laughs> in the Northern Hemisphere. So we will see you back again next school year. Until then, Keep your eyes on natgeoed.org. Make sure that you pay attention to all the exploration-based fun that we're going to get into. And we'll put up a schedule for next year's show. Until then, go and watch the documentary that Sammy talked about. We are linking it in our YouTube chat and our Zoom chat. And also, stay curious, keep exploring, and let's be dance end to summer. Bye, everyone. See ya. <laughs>